Anytime I something went wrong in my life, drink. A girlfriend broke up with me, drink. I lost my job, drink. Excuse after excuse after excuse. And then I wonder why my life's shit. Do you know? What, what was the realization? The realization I was going to die. Simple. <laughs> I was going to die, or someone else was. It still hits. I don't miss. I just go, go, go. Like a go, go flow. And I'm almost known. And I told you so. When I throw these flows, like a stroke chimbo. And I ain't too close. It's your slow goes. And I'm on my grind. That is all the time. I do not do breaks. That's right. I stay in drive. And look, I'm back with a little bit of that. And a little more cash than I came with. Ready that cat is out that bag. But I still ask the boy. I got skills. I don't need her. I don't need him. I don't need help with me. I got this. I can sing songs. I can spit raps. And I can do both. Even do this. Word. This episode is brought to you by Sweat Tent, the pioneers of the portable wood-burning sauna. Did you know that using the sauna three to four times per week could reduce your risk of cardiovascular disease by up to 50% and make you 60% less likely to experience Alzheimer's disease? That's why I've been a big fan of the sauna for years. But having to go to a crowded gym to do it isn't ideal. And all the at-home options are bulky and expensive. That's why I only use the Sweat Tent for my sauna needs. It's the most storable and affordable wood-burning sauna on the market. It not only takes minutes to set up, but it can reach 200 degrees Fahrenheit in 30 minutes or less. So whether you're enjoying it yourself in your backyard, with friends, or in need of a reliable sauna on the go, Sweat Tent is your best choice for the most portable, storable, and enjoyable outdoor sauna experience. All on the Stacks listeners will receive $100 off when you use code OTS. Visit SweatTent.com today to get $100 off your purchase with code OTS at checkout. Again, that's sweattent.com to get $100 off with code OTS. Sweat Tent, helping you fire up your home wellness routine. This episode is brought to you by Burn, the fitness company behind the Today Show approved Burn Board. If I'm being honest, working out can be a real chore, especially as a new dad in desperate need of sleep and cardio. Burn is founded by NEPA native Jimmy T. Martin, and his Burn Board offers a low impact core and cardio experience unlike anything I've done before. They have hundreds of on-demand workouts that are great for beginners, seasoned athletes, and out-of-shape podcast hosts who love supporting small businesses. My wife and I use it pretty frequently throughout the week, and it's honestly a great way to burn a ton of calories without burning a ton of cash. Not to mention, it's a great tool for skiers, runners, wrestlers, and hockey players. Jimmy is offering all On The Stacks listeners 15% off when they use the code STACKS15. Visit theburn.com today to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15 at checkout. Again, that's theburn, T-H-E-B-R-R-N.com to get 15% off your purchase with code STACKS15. It's time to get on board today with Burn. This episode is brought to you by Kavanaugh's Grill, one of my favorite places to eat and drink in any PA. They've got one of the best outdoor patios with 13 TVs and over 20 beers on tap. You can also dine inside at this cozy Irish-style pub where your beer never goes empty. Did I mention how delicious their food is? Their in-house smoked brisket, barbecue ribs, and wings are to die for. So grab your friends and have a drink on me at Kavanaugh's. Mention code STACKS for one free draft beer with purchase of any entree when you dine in. Located at 163 North Main Street in Mountaintop, Kavanaugh's is open at 4 p.m. during the week and 12 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday during football season. Dine in today at Mountaintop's only Irish-style pub. What's up, podcast? It's your host, Bill Corgan Jr. here in the Blue Door Studio, protected by Richie Security Solutions. Branko, welcome to the On The Stacks podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate, appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in. Mm. What um, This is your uh, this is your first experience in like the, in the Wilkes-Barre area. Mm-hmm. So, I've uh, never been around. Yeah. The, yeah. The, uh, Sandy, the more I spend it at the... Yeah. The more I want to be here, that's yeah. just, it's just so calm, like away from the city. Yes, yeah, so it was your your the short time that you've been here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you like you like the area, huh? Love it, man. The mountains. Uh, there's some you got some good views. We do. Yeah, got some good good mountains around here. Yeah, uh, you you're like a you're more of like an outdoors guy. I love the outdoors. Yeah, anything yeah. to do with water, I love, man. Yeah, you know. But uh, at the moment, I live in the city, so I don't see much of that. You know, <laughs> I just see. Uh, Angry people and cars dooting and beeping and all that Con- traffic Con- shit. Yeah, the concrete jungle. Yeah, that's what right? they call it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're up in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but uh, and I mean, I'm sure at this point, I think everybody can hear by your accent. Um, they could probably tell where you're where you're originally from. Yeah, I'm from the homeland. I'm from Ireland. Um, <clears throat> I I came over to the states about eight years ago. Um, and I've been trying to pursue this music thing. That's one of the reasons that I'm here. You know, um, yeah. Uh, but born and bred in Ireland. But I mean, I've I've came to the states from I was twelve years old. Um, I used to come and spend my summers here with like a host family in New York so I think I always knew this was my home you know and from then I've been trying to get back and live here you know but yeah this is my home now so so you said you were when you were 12 you mm. came and you stayed with a host family in New York City yeah why so in Ireland and those it was there used to be a war in Ireland okay like um, between religion <clears throat> and where I'm from was quite a quite a hostile bitter place you know so they got the, this opportunity for kids who you know had like single parents or you know just wasn't doing too good and they, they give them this opportunity where they want to get them away for the summers when the, the troubles were heightened you know so i got picked to go to get this opportunity so every summer for six weeks i'd go to new york with this host family who would look after me bring me on trips and you know a life that i couldn't imagine you know and where i'm from you know so yeah, the, the f you're only supposed to go one year, but the family invited me back six, five years after that there. So every summer I was going, it was like my vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like so, summer vacay. Yeah. So what what was this? What was this <clears throat> this war in in Ireland? What was that about? I mean, so you it's touched war. on a little bit about religion, but like yeah. what what was really happening? So it's just about over. I be here all day if I explain everything, <laughs> but I'll try my best. But even the ten thousand you know, foot be overview between like Catholics and Protestants back home, there was always been this divide. You know, um, there was this like this time in Ireland where it was called the Troubles. You know, there was a lot of people that died during this. There was a lot of people shot, murdered, bombed. You know, innocent people were killed, all because of religion and and land, basically. You know, so one side say that you know ireland is ireland and the other side said no it's part of the uk you know and and there is a lot more go in depth for that there but that's just the basis for someone in the outside looking in you know and it 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 it, it sort of um made a lot of people better and and there were some dark times through that you know luckily i wasn't i wasn't i grew i didn't wasn't in the in the worst of it you know like I, just where i'm from there wasn't it wasn't that bad where i was from because i, I was too young to know but the people were like i didn't see i think at one time when i was in school i remember a bomb going off in my town i remember the the school uh the window shot like like shaking i remember that and I, that's i only remember that that moment you know um and i do remember a lot of ratting growing up you know i do remember being involved in a lot of rats you know and making uh this one time actually we were in a park and the british army were all filled in the park and uh, like there was going to be a march going on by the by the other side, and people were getting ready to rat and stuff. So me and my friend, I don't even, I think we were like ten years old, and we were building our Molotov cocktails, as you call them here. They're called petrol bombs back home, and we were making them to see if what they'd be like and how to throw them and stuff. And I threw mine at a tree to see if it would go, and my whole leg went up in flames because there was petrol on my jeans. So I started rolling down the hill with my jeans down to my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got just, yourself Fr friendly fire yeah right so i'm like all right i'm no good at this but um yeah i remember going home my mom smelling the, the petrol off me and, and seeing my legs singed and stuff from that so it wasn't a good um experience but yeah that was that was just normal for us growing up and in, in where i was from you know you know it was it was normal to see a rat it was normal to see police getting paint bombed or petrol bombed or or stones three out of bricks you know and people getting split open and stuff you know I, it was the norm growing up in you know thankfully it's not it's not like that today though you know people have moved on it's just um it's good to see you know there's a lot of people that building relationships now there you know but um but you're, like, you're, you're, there was there was you were around some some violence as yeah. a kid and like the to you like you didn't really know anything different no right no i remember i remember one time in a the where I was, where I'm from, is called the Gavahi Road. It's probably one of the most famous roads in probably the world because there was reporters from America coming to see all this, 
you know, and one side wanted to march down it, and the other side didn't want to march down it, and that's because it's different religion, you know. Um, but I remember seeing like, like going through crowds of ratting, and my mother seeing my mother there too, and her like falling and people running over, and her to be dragged into a house, you know, and me watching as a kid, like that's my mother, you know. It's so like those things probably. You know, still, or I'm affected by those to to this day. You know, little did I know. You know, how old were you when that happened? I want to say around ten or something. I can't remember. It was, and you saw your mom get like knocked yeah. down and dragged into a house. Yeah, just we were just uh, like the police would what they call a baton charge. They would charge everybody, and then everybody would run one way all together. So it was just like a stampede, I suppose. But yeah, I remember seeing that, my mother falling and people running over and then getting dragged into a house to be safe, you know. Wow. I'm in the crowd, I don't know where I'm at, you know. What'd you do? I just followed the crowd. Wow. Yeah. Did you like run but after, like try to like... I tried to mom? get back, but the police were already bringing yeah, us so you, oh, so you couldn't, you, so you couldn't, couldn't get go, through? No. Wow. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's different scenes like that. I've seen a couple of gruesome scenes, you know, people getting hit with bottles and stones, split open blood and stuff. Yikes. Seen as someone a ten year old kid. Yeah. I think I was ten, around that age. Yeah, like, ten or twelve. Yeah. yeah. And I seen um a guy getting shot by a plastic bullet on his neck here. A rubber bullet. Do you know what that is? Yeah. 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 So yeah, yeah. So when they shot them, people used to hunker down, but I guess he hunkered down too late and it hit him in the neck. Ooh. Yeah. Does that does it puncture? Yeah, it'll leave a big mark and a big bruise around Ooh. bruise, I remember it to this day, yeah. Ouch. Hmm. Thankfully, I've never been <laughs> shot like that. <laughs> but yeah, you missed you missed the no no rubber bullets for you, huh? Yeah, but I I, I grew up listening, hearing about other people, you know, getting shot and stuff too of of because they're doing criminal activities, you know, by paramilitary groups. Okay, you know? like um, I know a guy that got shot in both knees. Ow. Before, yeah. Ouch. Yeah, that's if you it used to be around it in the north of Ireland if you were selling drugs or you were getting involved in criminal stuff, you know, that, that people would, you'd be dealt with and you'd be taught a lesson, you know. And who who would do that? Who are, who are these people? Paramilitary groups. What are they? They're just like... So they're just a, like a... I don't want to get into it on this podcast. I don't want to who they are or mention any names. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, so... But um, they... Uh, they used to be they wanted to fight for their country, you know. Okay, and yeah. And they were also trying to help the community in ways, you know, where the your, your government wouldn't. Got it. You okay. Know, yeah. They yeah. were more strong. I think that's armed. the answer I was looking yeah. for. I wasn't looking for names, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the safety of all of us here, you know. Right. But um. Yeah. But no, yeah. I just wanted to understand, like, these are people that were, you know, trying to do the right thing in the towns, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. When 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 the government wouldn't. Yeah. yeah exactly. Kinda... Because the the police, there was no policing really, because were, everyone was against the police. Got it. Because they weren't helping situations. They were. That's why. There's a lot of uh, corruption going on, and you know. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild to think about, you know, because, <clears throat> you know, like here we're, where we're at, like I was born and raised in this area. You know, I know mm. you, you've only been here for a very, very short time. Yeah. Like, like, right. really, like probably 12, less than 12 hours or 12 yeah. hours, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, you, you see this area. Like, I mean, I've never, I, like I said, I grew up here. I've never experienced anything like that, obviously. Mm. You know I mean? We've well, never, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like if you went out, walked out the door there on that street, mm. imagine like police jeeps, police sarsons, fires, Burnt out cars, just like right outside just, my door. And people rat and fighting. Yeah, getting this, hit. That was like, and in the summer is where it was like the main. main why, time. why? Why the summer? Because there's a holiday called the 12th of July. It's a, a Protestant holiday, and they burn they burn bonfires for it. So it's like everybody starts to get from both sides get bitter around that time of year, mm. and it's yeah. In our town, there was a big wall where it divided the Catholics and the Protestants from, like, it's like, that's the Catholic state, that's the Protestant state. There's a wall. An actual wall. Yeah. So the police would, so at the summers, they would sit on each side of it and people would throw stuff over from each side. <laughs> you would hear a window smash here, yeah. a window smash. Yeah. You know, it was tit for tat the whole, yeah. whole summer. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, it was, sometimes it was scary, you know. Yeah, I bet, man. Mm. Wow. So okay, so yeah, so you know, the reason why because I haven't really talked about anything out there before in a long time. Yeah, really I don't, I just, to about go this? back there, it's kind of yeah, wow, yeah. You say it out loud, you know? Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. It's crazy. Yeah, like I can't imagine. You know, I think people, you know, like maybe like me or just you know here in America, I think a lot of times we people take take the you know 
take for granted what we have here yeah. in America. Mm. You know, and it's like mm. you, you hear stories of guys like you growing up, you know, as a kid and experiencing yeah. that and, you know, all the things going on in the in the world, even like right now and just other parts of the world, you know, yeah. that um, those things don't really happen here. I mean, no. I mean, there's obviously there's, you know, there's all kinds of riots and there's been a lot of riots yeah. and things happening. Like, well, I, I sort of you know, would, would relate to it whenever there was like the whole Black Lives Matters movement and and the sort of how they rebelled and stuff too. It kind of was like similar. Similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it was over color. We were over religion. That's the difference. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so like I can understand people's um, passion for that, you know. Sure. So like it wasn't just oh let's have a rat let's do you know what I mean yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah. it wasn't right. like that there was a cause yeah you know? so okay so when you um so you came to you you had this host family in New York City yeah right and so like so when you when you when you came here like was it like your mom was like hey I wanna mm. I wanna send you there to just to be safe for the summer like how yeah. how, did, how did that how did she, that go like what was that conversation like so uh, in school you had to write a letter and say why you would like to go to New York why you you know who was the letter to. You, it was so everybody in their class would get would get the chance to write the letter to say why you can why you why you think you'd be good candidate to go to New York. So I would write, well, I'm good at uh, laundry. I'm good at the hoovering. I wrote, <laughs> I'm good at Hoover instead of vacuuming. Hoovering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the family always said that to me after. Like, yeah. <laughs> they always said, oh, when are you going to Hoover for us? You know, I, for the rest of my <laughs> life, I'm gonna, every time I vacuum, I'm like, um, that's what I'm going to say I'm doing. I'm Hoovering. <laughs> I'm hoovering. That's what I love it. it. I love it. Yeah. 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 It's great. Um, so, yeah. So I would write that. You know, I'm good. I get on with people well. I like sports. You know, all that sort of thing. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I guess I don't even know if that was how I got picked because I think it was more to do with, you know, d does your family have a mother and father in it? Is there any loss in the family? Is there, is there are you in, like... um you know, Saxony at housing or anything like that. You know, that's I think that's they kind more, of look at all the aspects of your yeah, life, right? I think that people who are more underprivileged got it. You know, and I had a, I grew up with a single parent. My mother raised me and my two sisters. You know, so I I think that will probably probably went into it. You know, yeah, because yeah, I remember coming here and sitting down at a dinner table with they had five sons and one daughter. And it's just like around a big family table eating dinner, sure. And I was like, I don't I never had this experience before. Like, I was uh, like, never like sat down as, like with a family, like as a family, like eating. No, I don't remember. I don't remember any of those occasions. Wow. Um, if I if there was or ever was one, I remember just like if my mother got made a dinner, I probably sat on the couch in the living room, or she sat on a couch. Do you know what I mean? It wasn't a that whole like let's talk about our day kind of thing. You know, that's like. This whole family time, I, I, I'm not saying that bad, bad mouth my mother or anything that she, she raised me the best that she could, you know. Sure, yeah. But um, but you, just had, you just had different, um, uh, just different scenarios. Yeah, different. Yeah. So you said you had two sisters. You have two sisters. Two older sisters. Yeah. How, yeah. How, how close in age are you guys? I hate this part because <laughs> I always forget. I'm bad with the ages because I've got a million nieces and nephews. Yeah, yeah. Um, but my like, sister is is. She's fifty, and my that's the oldest, mm -hmm. and then my the younger one. Then she's in the middle, so she's like thirty eight. I want to say, okay, around that age. And I'm you're, the youngest. You're the youngest. Yeah, yeah. You have a nice beard, by the way. Do you like that? I'm I growing love, that out. I love the beard. I'm growing that at the minute. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with it. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? It's uh, this time of year, I suppose, and it's. The, is it like a winter beard? I'd love it to be, but my girlfriend doesn't want me to shave it at all. Yeah, no, don't. <laughs> She's yeah. like told me keep it. Yeah, don't, keep don't, it, don't ever get or rid we'll, of it. Or we we'll break up. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd break up with you too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you two should get together somehow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I think it's a, it's a good look. Yeah, so, all right, so you, so you had two sisters, and like and like you said, so you know maybe a little bit of an age gap. So like, but again, yeah. you didn't really have like that. I'll say like a, yeah, tip, a typical like no, upbringing like so um, my sisters them they got married and they moved had the kids so it was just me and my mother got it okay so it was kind of then my mother was an al my mother was an alcoholic always she was yeah she died when I was fourteen um, she took her own life suicide so it was just me and her so I was playing this role of you know watching my mom being sick in the bathroom and like finding bottles and and like her drinking and just like you know this is it, it wasn't like that all the time but when it did happen you know those are the moments that i'll never forget you know so my my older sister would have to take me away to her house and get me away from my mother you know so this is a whole 
I think we worked out. I, I moved around like seven different houses of them in one year. Wow. Like, um, just my mother being unhappy, you know. So I watched my mother go into hospitals, sanitariums, and that sort of thing, and in and out of A and stuff, you know. Um, she battled. She like, I mean, she never gave up trying, but you know, it 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 took her in the end, you know. Wow. So uh, yeah, suicide is a big, big, big thing with me. Like yeah. I have a big passion for it. I had I have a I have a couple of friends that have died from it. Really? You know, it's a very um it's a big topic back home. Is it? I mean it's not as big as it should be, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think that um there needs to be more done about it. And I, I hear this all the time about like, you know, yeah, well these governments saying, Oh, we get funding for this and funding like to stop the bullshit. Just start with start with yourself. Start being nice to everybody, a little more nice to everybody. Start within here. Start with the money. We don't have the money for this, don't have the money for that. Like Yeah, it's bullshit. Yeah. Like I've seen people like I've I've had my own I've been depressed all my life. You know? I know how that feels. Like just I don't know, I get very emotional about it, you know? Yeah. But um So what do you think the um you know, Lisa, you talked about like the suicide being very, you know, mm. pretty common, you know, back where you're from. Like, why, yeah. why do you think that? Like, why do you think that that is? I mean, I think it's because it's the norm. I think it's the norm back home where you can, where people just drink. People are happy with being average. I think people are happy with just like not having a good job and getting paid benefits and just like, okay, that's for me. Or if they get an average job in a factory, yeah, well, that's my life, you know. I think our, like, just their own mental illness too, you know. There's a lot of just, like, drugs. There's a lot of alcohol issues there. There's a lot of single-parent families, you know. People have went through trauma, especially, like, from what I told you before about all the, what happened, what Ireland used to be like. People are still suffering from that, you know. But nobody wants to talk to nobody. Mm. They have to be go have to go to a pub to go and tell to talk to someone, mm. you know. Yeah, you can't be sober. Yeah, show me. You know what people say, oh, a real man sitting up on a bar giving your kid money to sh the hustle away. How about two people sit down at a table and start talking about how they feel? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you feel right now? Talking like this, it's great. It's great. <laughs> I can tell another human being how I feel right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't used to be like that. Yeah. I had to bottle everything in. And yeah. Then, what you used to be like? I would just drink it away, man. You know, I, 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 I've been, I've been trying to get sober for about ten years, right? So my, I went into my first um, mental hospital when I was twenty four. I'm thirty four now. I only got sober. I'm sober six months now. It's Congra taken me that long. Congratulations, by thank the way. you, yeah, thank you. You know, I, anytime I something went wrong in my life, drink. A girlfriend broke up with me, drink. Uh, I lost my job, drink, excuse after excuse after excuse. And then I wonder why my life's shit, do you know? It's not like that today, you know? So what, what was the realization? The realization I was going to die. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> I was going to die, or someone else was. That's where I was at, you know? When you're, um, yeah, when, you, when you're running about, Looking guns to shoot people, <laughs> or yourself—that's you know. Right, where, where is my head at? Yeah, you know, over nothing. You know, I was very in my drink. I was very impulsive. You know, I uh, it took me to places where I'd never thought I'd been. You know, um, I one night I was it was I came home from work. It was a Tuesday night. I had probably a, just an average day at work. I got myself six beer, six Corona. And I said to myself, it was like seven in the evening. I was like, I'm going to jump on a bus and go to New York. Four hour ride. Seven o'clock at night. Why? <laughs> I had $100 in my pocket. Went to New York. Ended up there till like 12 o'clock at night. Got one pint in a bar that was about to close. And I spent the rest of the night sleeping in Central Park. Ended up in a mental asylum for two weeks. Then run the streets in New York for about a month. That's where that took me. You were homeless. Mm. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I had a home. Yeah. I wanted a drink. Now I don't have a home. Wow. Yeah. That, fa that fast. That fast. 
Wow. I'd love to tell you I stopped drinking after that, but I didn't. You know, if you, someone tell me, you know, you drink that right now, that bottle, and you're gonna, you're gonna die after that. Okay, but at least I'll be drunk. <laughs> it's that. It's that simple. I didn't care what happened to me in the end. I didn't care. Why? Why do you think that? I just lost hope. I lost hope. I lost belief in myself. I. Uh, I. I I just had no ambition, you know. I was just getting money to drink, basically, because I was, I was, I didn't have new clothes, I didn't have a new phone, or you know, I wasn't buying presents or gifts for anybody because no one wanted anything to do with me. You know, I had no friends. People weren't calling me and saying, "Oh, I'm getting married. Do you want to go to the wedding?" I wasn't getting those invites no more. You know, you had nothing, huh? Nothing. Nobody wanted anything to do with me. My my one of my best friends who was living with me could barely talk to me. Because every time he seen me, I was drinking and I wasn't going to work. You know, he still stuck by me. Thank you, Steph, for that. But I don't blame anybody for not having wanting to have anything to do with me because I was I I didn't bring benefit to their lives. You know. Yeah. I was. Uh, I didn't like. I wasn't. If I wasn't doing anything for myself, I certainly wasn't doing anything for anybody else. You know. I wasn't a good friend. I wasn't a good brother. I wasn't a good boyfriend. You know, I was. I was a bum. <laughs> that yeah. was simple. What it was called yeah. a spade a spade. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, so you said you for a span of like ten years. Yeah. In and out of AA treatment you know, centers, and, treatments and psych and wards, getting arrested. <laughs> you know all that, and I I was told when I first came into AA when I was twenty four. I was told, you've got a job, you've got uh, a family, you've got a relationship. You will lose all that if you keep drinking. And sure enough, I was like, what are you talking about? I'm not like him. I'm not like that. I remember they'd done a liver count to me and they said my liver was okay. And I was like, sure, I can go out drinking after this. <laughs> it's probably not now. I haven't checked it, but it's <laughs> probably not great. Yeah. You know? But um, I just remember always comparing myself to other people. Like saying like, ah, oh, I'm not, I'm not that bad or. Yeah. Cause you think of an alcoholic, you think of some bum in a park with a paper bag and a glass bottle. Right. But it's all, it come, an alcoholic is, is of everywhere, of all sex, denominations, religions, all colors, all jobs. I've seen doctors, teachers, lawyers, you know, it's, it doesn't discriminate. So like I've seen, I've seen all these people, like I can. I can name the amount of times I've been sitting talking to these people and all in mental asylums or, or anything, like, you know? But I used to think I was better. And I'm like, even when I was in the, the mental asylum, I'm like, they're all not right. You know, I'm the only one. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're crazy. I'm, I'm sane. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm, I was like, that one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. So, but I always compared. And it was only until I started to relate to people in Alcoholics Anonymous that I started to go right. Mm. You know, maybe. They're onto something here, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe like yeah. they're right and I'm wrong. Kind exactly. Of thing. You know, and I used to think it was right all my life. You know, as I was far from the truth. Yeah. Yeah. It's so like, did you like? You know, you said you like you didn't really. You feel like you, you had nobody. Right? Like, you feel like you didn't have a, a purpose like anymore. Yeah. Do you because like lost purpose? I you did. Said you were hopeless, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I I wanted to come to this country to pursue my music, right? And I got a little a bit of that. You know, when we talked about whenever I met Yellow Wolf and, and then I, I worked with one of his producers, you know, and I got a song, I was like, you know, maybe I'm onto something here, you know? But I didn't change my character, and that was the problem there, right? That deal, like, I was going to help him with his whiskey. That deal fell through on my end because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready to handle all that. I was still drinking the head off myself. I wasn't sober at one bit. You know, when I'm trying to handle someone's... No. I had to work on me first, right? And that's the thing that I keep hearing and I, I keep standing by. Your talent will take you places that your character can't keep up with, right? Now, what I mean by that was I was running around saying, oh, you know, I, I'm going to work with Yellow Wolf and all this and this ego fucking thing started to kick in. You know, all these selfish thoughts we would get in, you know, what if I can get this and I can get to work with this guy and work with, you know. Who wants to deal with someone like that? 
Do you know what I mean? I see other artists too that talk. I talk to, and some that I don't talk to, and I see them on their social medias, and they're say, they're saying, "Well, oh, they've all got this ego and stuff." Imagine if you're going to meet a manager or someone that you hope that, or a record label or something, you want them to to buy into you, and you look like a fucking tool. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Why would yeah. They, they? Yeah. No matter how talented you are, they won't want to deal with you in business. Yeah. Do you know? Mm-hmm. So. That point, my time wasn't the time for me. It wasn't right. I wasn't ready. You know, I had to go through all the bullshit. I had to get homeless. I had to go through the the mental hospitals, the the ups, the downs, the breakups. You know, the fights. I had to go through all that to get to where I am today. You know. Yeah, that's so interesting. You say that, like, because you know, it's like for ten years you battled. You know, like you were mm. battling all this, yeah. and it's like. You had to experience what you had to experience to to be the person you are today mm. right yeah it's you have to accept it that's simple as that yeah you have to like today is a good day right i'm sitting here good company good podcast everything like I, i'm I, people are supporting me through my music and all today's a good day tomorrow might be different right tomorrow god forbid someone in my family or something days, something like that. Like, but I've got to, I've got to know how to work through those times. That's growth. Accept those situations because I can't change them. They're out of my hands. Do you know? Anything, it, it, a job, your job doesn't go well. Accept, like, okay, why is my job not going well? Why my higher power telling me something? You know, there's a reason for everything. Believe me, like bad or good, that is how you deal with them and accept them. I, I'm, I'm not. Preaching here because I I get it wrong all the time. I, by no means do I get everything right. You know, I'm still learning. I learn every day. I make mistakes. I'm human. But the you know just to to continue to grow each and every day to try and put that in front of yourself, like to learn, is uh just a beautiful thing. Like, what got you into music? Again, we go back to like my mother drinking and stuff, and and I just was very withdrawn shy kid you know and i remember she brought me back a tape of a cassette tape of eminem stan on one side i think and the real slim shady on the other and i started to listen i was like fuck i like this you know what there's someone else worse off than me <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah not a not, it's just not me that's you know so it was like i closed the bedroom door i put my radio on i'd be like turning it down i have my ear up to it and it just took me to like escape it was an escape and then I started to think, I was always good in English class, I was good at writing poetry and all. I was like, maybe I can write, maybe I can write a song, you know. And it spiraled there and it just kept on going and then... So did you start writing as a kid? Hmm, 12 years old. Like you like you were writing, were you writing music then? Yeah, I was writing lyrics. Yeah. To like beats of CDs and tapes, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um. then uh, I would, I would like start and like start a plan for school competitions I do like i done an m m that was my first ever thing on stage was the dungarees a blonde hair and uh going and i got actually i kept winning these competitions of like performing and rapping as m m you know and um anything i could do and then i figured out a guy who uh sama shout out shout out to sama he uh is a guy from home he actually lives in new york now I heard one of his CDs that he made at home using a PC mic on a laptop. And I was like, wow. So he showed me how to do it. And then I started to make my own songs. Very terrible songs now I've listened to them again. <laughs> but like it was the it was cool just to do, you know. I would do these comedy skits, you know, just using a PC mic up to a computer, you know. It was, yeah, it yeah. was great. So that all spiraled and, and then I was learning more. I was listening to different artists, not just Eminem, you know. Um and it was just yeah, I loved it, man. And I loved the feeling of being on stage and people cheering for you, you know. I loved that feeling. Just of, like, you know, I'm, I'm not the shy kid. I'm not, like, withdrawn. All my friends were playing sports, like football and stuff. And, well, you call it soccer, but I would be, like, standing watching them, you know. And I never liked sports. I never liked to get involved in anything like that. I'd be sitting ripping butts, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Strengthening and stuff, like, you know. But, um... But I always said, I want I want to give more, you know. I have something else to give than just this. So, yeah, my music was my thing. And I didn't, people, like, I want to, I don't, drama, 
done acting in the drama classes and you know was in commercials and all as well you know that was my thing the entertainment thing was me you know because I got to be someone else you know I, I just didn't want to be me I wanted to be something else or someone else you know and it took me away from that like I would go to auditions in Dublin or Belfast in the cities like and I'd go away for that day I'd be someone else I'd be like I'm no, oh, I'm fucking Brad Pitt or fucking Matthew McConaughey here, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I just got to be that different life. Even today, I feel that, like, I can't, I have to still be humbled, you know? But even today, of me coming down here, sitting in a nice hotel, and then, you know, I drove five hours to get here. It's like the whole, yeah, I'm going down to do a podcast, I'm doing something for the entertainment, you know? That, that gets me away from out of here, because out of here can trick me a lot, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? It keeps you, like, it's, um, like, gets you out of your, uh, your busy mind, right? Yeah. Like that, 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 that voice that noise yeah the noise that's a good way i like that yeah yeah so like so like writing for you and writing and performing mm -hmm. and, and all that like keeps you um grounded mm -hmm. we'll say maybe right? oh definitely definitely yeah. like i can i can like i done it last night i was a bit of shit going on in my head just my own thinking and um i just put my earphones in put a beat on to start i'm before you know what an hour passed and i'm still writing i'm like right i got go to sleep <laughs> it's 11 o'clock you know this it's it's therapy it's medicine man you know just like AA is with my drink it's medicine you know I'll see myself change if I don't go to if I go to one meeting a week all right if I go to two meetings a week okay if I go to three meetings all right <laughs> you know that's the way it's, it's like medicine if I don't get my medicine then my defects of character can come through you know you start to slip yeah and you know, a guy told me before, many meetings make it easy, few make it hard, none make it impossible. You know, doing the work of anything. It's like going to the gym. You know, one workout a week, okay. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If The more you do, the more you progress, right? The more you're on top of things, you know? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. start to learn how to jo handle situations better, I feel, you know? Sure. And you're living your daily program, you know? Mm -hmm. But you got to put in the work ahead of time. Exactly. You got to be prepared. It's like anything, yeah. It's like preparation. Right. You know, to like, come back, mm, right? Yeah, it's like you were you were lost. Yeah, it's like you gotta you gotta dig your way out of this hole, mm. put in the work, prepare for coming back to reality. Exactly. Really, I mean, like any like situation, as I said earlier, could anything could happen today or tomorrow. You know what I mean? If I have no meetings in and something happens tomorrow, there's a good chance I'll crumble when it happens. But if I have a few meetings in, I can maybe go right. Let's take a step back. Let's look at the situation, you know, a little bit better, you know? Yeah. Be able to handle situations better. Yeah. It's great. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> it's a spiritual awakening, man. That's all I can tell you. You probably didn't have that great beard then, did you? I didn't. I, I don't know what I had then. I uh, not, not a nice beard. Not a good one. No, it was no. probably dripping with Bud Light or fucking... <laughs> Something. Smoke Something, yeah. too. Yeah. I haven't smoked either. It's great. Used to I used to smoke a lot from when I was like twelve years old. I probably used to take cigarettes out of my mum's purse. Yeah, but um, like, and then I just drunk. I smoke when I drank, and now I don't drink, so I don't smoke. It's great. That's good. It doesn't sound like it, but my voice has got this huskiness over it. Now. Over over the smoking, probably since you were twelve. Damage, man. Yeah, <laughs> it works good in some songs. Now I'll have to say when I'm recording. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you said, you kind of said before, like. Everything happens for a reason. You, yeah. you went through all the things you went through mm. for for a reason, and it's like, it's yeah. Like now, now look, it's like it's it's in the music, right? right? And it, like, it almost helps you, even though the sound. shit was bad, right? Right, but like you mm. you did these things, and it's like, yeah. even though like you may like you said it might be like uh something like oh his voice is raspy or whatever, but mm. well maybe it, it helps the it's, music now. It's good. You just you just it's don't interesting. Know. Yeah, yeah. People, I think people go for that raspy thing to that in like country and stuff. Yeah. I like I like I, mean, the, I like the raspy thing. Yeah, you know who's that? What did you call it? C six Steve? You ever hear him? I don't Is know. Is it C six Steve? Used to see him like he was like a. I think that's his name. He played a guitar. He was this ginger bearded guy, and he had this real. He, yeah, I can't remember. Raspy voice. Yeah, yeah. What um? He sung that song like Creep. He sung that like he done a cover of Creep. Okay. Zama Creep. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Very good. You should look him up. After. I will. I will. Yeah, but um, do you think you know just from like a creativity standpoint? Like, did you did you feel like you were more creative when you were under the influence or or sober? 
Like, do you, like, what's what, um, what the, what the difference? That's interesting. Because sometimes, I mean, sometimes I've wrote some good shit when I'm fucking drunk, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. It, it never followed through, you know? That's the difference. Okay. I find my best time to write or be creative is first thing in the morning, between four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock. I remember you telling me you're up super early. Yeah. I remember we connected like a few weeks yeah. ago and you're like, yeah, man, I'll be up at like 4 a.m. And I'm, I'm like, bro, I'll call, you, I'll call you at like eight. <laughs> Yeah, like, you're like, oh, just hey, like, I'm, I'm, chance yeah, you're like, yeah, you're like, hey, I'm up super early, by the way. Like, and you made it a point, I think, say like 4 a.m. And I'm like, yeah. what is this? What is this guy doing? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's important that I that I uh, I have a morning routine. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I, I respect the hustle, man. I uh, yeah. I have to wake up. First of all, I got to get right with God, right? All right, tell me your tune. Let's back up here. Yeah. yeah. So like, well, you have you have this routine, mm -hmm. right? No, I will say this week. Everything's been crazy. I haven't been on my routine. It was this morning, but it I have good days and bad days. Okay. Sorry. Tell me. But tell what me, I tell aim for, I will say what I aim for is I wake up, I'll go I'll get right with God. I'll get on my knees and I'll tell him how what I'm grateful for. Everything in my life. And I'll just ask for strength and guidance throughout my day. That's it. Don't ask for no miracles. I'm done asking for miracles. You know what I mean? Don't set yourself up for failure. Just thankful. I think gratitude. I see your thing too. Your bracelet yeah. is grateful. It's yeah. It's good. So, um, yeah, be grateful. Then I get up and go to the gym. And then I come back, get ready for my day and go to work. You know, and that's my morning start. My morning usually starts great then. Also, getting in touch with another alcoholic, which I do every morning. I'm talking to an alcoholic who knows me inside out. And I know him inside out as well because we... We are we are alike with the same disease, you know. Yeah. So yeah, and then at night, I try my best to do this, and sometimes I don't again. But it's thanking them for your day before you go to bed. Just thank, just say thank you for the day. That's it. Simple as that, you know. In the evenings, probably you know, I go to my meetings if I can. And then you know that's it. That's worked for me. Something you know, whatever works for you, works for you. You know. I, you just people have to find it. Yeah, I mean, church works for people. I'm not a church guy. I'm. I don't believe in religion no more. But right? you said God. Yeah, it's my higher power of my own understanding. Yeah, t t talk about this because this is, this is yeah. an interesting we thing. We go down a rabbit hole here. This is interesting, you know. So I don't know what helps me, but I do know, and I call it God, right? I don't know if it's Protestant, Catholic, Jewish. I don't know, right? But a higher power, uh, something else better than me. I, cause I've tried to run shit my whole life, myself. Yeah, didn't work. How did that work out? <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah, not too good. Not too good. Yeah. So it is only until I give myself up to a higher power that things started going the right way. You know, I can't handle it. And there's it, it, some situations. If something, if I get in an argument during the day, I probably go, "Listen, God, I don't know how to deal with this, but I put it into your hands. Help me through this." On the Stacks will be back in a flash after a word from our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Elevation Wellness, NEPA's premier wellness center located on Monday Street in Wilkes-Barre. From pro athletes to busy parents, Elevation Wellness is leading the conversation when it comes to bettering your health through integrative medicine. Founded by NEPA native Louis Helmecki, Elevation Wellness offers physician-formulated and guided treatments that are administered by registered nurses. To learn more about how you can experience the benefits of IV vitamin therapy, multivitamin booster shots, non-invasive aesthetics, or peptide, NAD, red light, and compression therapy, visit elevation-wellness.com or follow them on Instagram at elevationwellnessnepa. All on the Stacks listeners will receive 10% off their first purchase with code STACKS at checkout. Call 570-762-9400 or visit elevation-wellness.com to book your appointment today. Elevation Wellness, taking your health to new heights. My greatest honor is receiving the trust of a family who has lost a loved one through the fault of another or receiving a call from someone who's been seriously injured and asking me to go to battle on their behalf and to receive the monetary justice they deserve. To learn more, visit Anzalone Law Offices online at anzalonelaw.com. And now we're back on the stacks. And as simple as that. As simple as that, and you, this takes off a load from me. 
mm. you know but like it, everybody's got their own understanding of the higher power you know it, it doesn't matter where you're from but you have to have, at least have a belief you could believe it have it as yourself believe it in yourself believe it in that phone you know mm -hmm. it's it's like it's it's up to you take your own your own um take on that you know yeah yeah so so you think um you know believing in these higher powers and like did this you did you believe in this prior to i mean i was brought up catholic but um i never really practiced the religion you know i only went because i was made to go by my auntie or she always used to bring me to mass or mm -hmm. you know but like and prayers i don't I don't get into saying prayers, you know, it's again religious, you know, but you just, you just do your own thing, do my own thing and what works for me, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, we could sit here all day and say about what religion does for us and what it doesn't, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I say I, I got a spiritual awakening. That's what I call it. When did you have that? Was there like a moment? I didn't have a moment, you know, but I just, I just remember waking up majority of times and going I didn't think of a drink today usually I wake up and think of where's my next drink come from I don't think about it <laughs> how is that possible I used to th I went for my longest bout of drinking was seven days one time no sleep no dr no eating no sleep seven days no just sleep. drink yeah. no sleep yeah just drink yeah that's wild mm-hmm a lot of my friends don't understand <laughs> on the, on the, how I'm, how I can go that long. Yeah, and you and and I think from the brief conversation we had before this too. I mean, you've also done you drugs too. So yeah, I've done drugs at the same yeah. time too. Like I, I, drugs weren't they're not a big thing with me, right? But it's I wouldn't have I wouldn't take drugs if I didn't drink. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if I don't drink, there's going to be no drugs. I never craved drugs. Do okay. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there was no drink left, I'd say yeah, we yeah, need to get a bag something, or something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah. ecstasy tablets. I remember took. We went to a, a rave back home. I took 20, 20 pills in one day. 20? <laughs> Ecstasy. 20? Yeah. They stopped sounds working. sounds like a lot. They stopped working. Oh, my God. They was just, I was just taking them to keep up going. It was doing nothing for me, but it was, yeah. Wow. But only because I had no drink, you know? People running around with glasses of water. I don't want fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I just, so... To be able to wake up in the morning and like I'm at a hotel, I was at a hotel last night by myself. I couldn't be trusted to go to a hotel this time last year. Yeah, I'd be there for days. It wouldn't get rid of me. <laughs> It'd be burnt down. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not joking. Yeah, take the whole place down. Yeah, yeah. I used to like just take trips to New York or take trips to fucking anywhere and just go just into hotels and drink myself in the hotel, man. You know? Wow. By myself. Just to be away just from... be away, put earphones in, fucking get in my zone and just fucking hate the world, you know? Mm. Just because of my problems. Yeah. I've and done so much. Like, I remember I was in the city one time in Boston. I was freezing. I fell out with my axe and I had nowhere to go. And I met these two girls and I was drinking with them at the bar. And I told them I had nowhere to go. And they said, do you want to come to our, our house? We're... Our husbands and all there will make you food and all. They thought it was homeless. <laughs> and, but I I just broke up my axe for a few minutes. And um, they took me to Maine. I went to Maine with these strangers. And I drank a, a big bottle of vodka straight in the, in the whole way down to Maine. <laughs> wow. In, this, in the winter, the snow was up to your knees. Oh, my God. I'm in Maine. Like, the next morning, I'm, like, waking up. And, like, some big guys looking at me. He's all, ready to go back to Boston? <laughs> like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> You're in Maine. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. It's wild. I have too many of these stories, man. You know, it's just the people wouldn't believe, you know? Yeah. Like that time in New York, I met a, she told me she was an actress in the, in the psych ward. There was a lot of, I was in the same psych ward as Kanye West was in, mm. right? So at this particular place, the, there's artists, there's celebrities all go in through this place. It's like, 20 floors in this building so if you want to know what the definition of, the, of depression is try a summer's day when you're looking out from the 20th floor and a psych ward looking at new york city <laughs> and you can't get out <laughs> not, i done that that's depression yeah. yeah so anyway i made friends with this actress in it um later she told me she was an adult actress she's a famous porn star 
And I hung around with her for the next month in New York and ho- lived out of hotels. With her? Yeah. And we, uh, we. Isn't that expensive? I didn't pay for none. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. She bought me a, a Montclair jacket, $4,000. Oh, so she had she some money. She bought me a new iPhone. She bought me all these clothes. She gave me $100 a day to go drink. Um, we went to one of Trump's hotels. They all knew her there. The paparazzi were popping us on the way out. I was living this rock star fucking I was lifestyle. Say, yeah, you were, you became. And like, I hadn't a fucking shilling. I hadn't a dollar. Wow. I was a bum. I was literally at one drink away from on the street. Wow. I was just delirious. I was, wouldn't sleep. And one night I took like nine tablets to to just go to sleep. Like sleeping pills. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know if I was gonna wake up or not. I think I woke up like a day later. Jeez. Hmm. She woke me up. She was slapping my face. I was just like, just like foaming stuff in the mouth. <laughs> I got up and started drinking. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that was like, that's insanity, man. That's where it took me. Yeah. You know, I, I just, I didn't care who you were or what you were. I would, if you were drinking with me and you were paying for my drink or you could benefit me drinking. You were there. Yep. Sign me up. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. That was you. That was me. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. So like so all of this like are you were trying to escape right it was there did you did you find like an underlying you know what's really going on with me kind of that's thing? the stuff that I work on a daily basis you know mm-hmm. um, you know obviously I've had some traumatic events in my life yeah that you know that I want to say all right well my mother died in suicide my mother was an alcoholic my father wasn't around uh, you know I had shitty relationships you know everything I just. I can't pinpoint one different thing, you know, but like that's something I need to probably go sit down with a psychologist or whatever, you know, but when I try to work it in my AA program, you know, look at a, look at times where I was wrong, where I've been wronged, you know, look at events of who hurt me, who I, who I hurt, you know what I mean? And like accept those, make amends where possible, that sort of thing. That helps. You yeah. Know? And I mean, it's mostly just for people who, who actually matter in your life today, do you know what I mean? Like your friends, your close circle, the people that, you know, that that it I uh, that it hurts you that you hurt them, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's, like, and again, that's all that I can do today to help. Yeah. If I dwell in how, why my mother that, uh, took her own life and left me on my own, if I dwell on that, I'll be drinking tomorrow. If I keep thinking about that, you know? But it's a, it's honestly a good thing that my mother did what she did because she wasn't happy, you know. Now she's happy. Now she's free from that, mm-hmm. and that's the way I have to look at it. And that's it. That's where the, it closes. I don't go any further than that, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I would say to anybody out there who's watching this, you gotta talk. For God's sake, just talk to someone. You know, you, it gets emotional, man. You gotta talk. You know. Because, uh, sorry, people are, you, it's, it's, I have no words for this no more, you know, just a few weeks back there was someone from my area died, you know, from suicide, only a young kid, his family have to live with that, I'll say to them, you know, it will get better, but guys just talk. Talk to you know if you got something even if it's that small I don't care hit me up I'm available twenty four seven and there's plenty of people like me that that is you're up at four a.m. I'm up at four a.m. Call this guy at four a.m. <laughs> yeah you know yeah come to the gym with me yeah <laughs> you know? yeah 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 but just talk like you said just talk it's it's not that hard after you start you know whatever it is you know we're all in this together. Yeah, there's too much going on in the world these days to be worrying about stupid shit, material right? bullshit, man. A lot of bullshit. Yeah, man. A lot of bullshit. Do you know what I love, man? See a Sunday morning, grabbing a coffee and sitting down at the beach and just if you don't have a beach beside you, go sit down in the park. Just sit there, take it in, meditate on that, like you know, fresh air. Yeah. Whether or not it's fresh or not, I don't know. <laughs> Either way, but you live. just that, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Whatever it is. Around here is amazing for that, the mountains and looking into all that, man, that's great. It is, yeah. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. Just get out there, man. 
experience st- shit. Like people, th- I know people from home that are afraid to leave the town. There's more to the world than our town. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Go out and see th- shit, man. Yeah. Take a boat somewhere, do you know? I don't know for a long time thinking that it was, my circle was that small. It's not. You know? Mm-hmm. It's more to life than this shit. More to life than this. Yeah. And it's, and it's not too late, you know? No. I think people, you know, we're, we're, we're like the same age. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, even people like my age or even people like a few years older than me, you know what I hear a lot from people is, um, um, not, not necessarily whether it's drug or alcohol issues, but just maybe, you know, trying something new or starting, mm-hmm. you know, maybe changing careers or whatever it is. It's just like, I hear, I hear a lot from people. It's like, ah, like I'm too old. It's yeah. too late. And I'm like, what? Fuck. I'm like, you're 35 or you're 40, like 40, like even 50. You should be in your prime. <laughs> yeah. You still got so much more time. Yeah. And everybody just thinks like, ah, like, you know what? Everyone's like, oh, it's too big of a risk. Yeah. I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm almost 40, you know, not me. But just saying, like other people yeah. I've heard, right? He's like, oh, I'm almost forty, you know, whatever. And like, it's like, ah, but you know, like I have this, I have this, and I have that, and I have that. It's like, oh, I don't want to take a step back, or I don't want to start over, or it's but like, how will ah. you know then? How will right. you know? To me, to me, you know what I say? It's too big of a risk not to try. Exactly. When somebody tells me mm. it's too risky to try that or do that, I'm like, yeah, you're crazy. It's too big of a risk not to do it. Exactly. Right. Look at you with this shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Seriously. When did you when did you decide like this is you were just going to go? I don't know, man. I think it's kind of like always been like mm. you know, there but just didn't really yeah. subconsciously. You know. So you ever hear that thing Matthew McConaughey he says something about that. He says like you never know when you when something's telling you something. Yeah, like it's like a gut. Yeah. A gut feeling. Yeah. It's a you little know? voice behind or whatever saying go. Yeah. Go. Yeah. You know? It's like I, you know, I think I've like I've always had like that little bit of yeah. like oh, what if? Yeah. What if? Like, I, I, even me coming down here, I was going to cancel. Yeah, you almost did. Yeah. My, only my, me and my girl would talk about it, and she's like, why, why, why? I was like, I don't know, the drive, the fucking drive. Yeah. I would drive fucking six hours to go and get a drink. <laughs> Easy. Yeah. No problem. Right. Any hour of the night. This shit helps. You're good. I'm glad, man. Yeah. It's therapeutic. Yeah, for definitely. both for both parties. Exactly. <laughs> right. Seriously, man. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's just like we're just we're just having a conversation. That's it. You know. This is like I don't need to get a meeting today. I've had a meeting. This Good. is like a meeting. Is you it? know what I mean? Yeah. This is like an AA yeah. meeting for you. Yeah. I'm honored, man. Welcome to the group. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hi, have I'm you Bill ever Corcoran. Been in? Yeah, no, I haven't. <laughs> you haven't. No. no. You can go to open meetings too. You can see like someone. You can go to ones where like. You don't have to be an alcoholic. Got it. Okay. You can see what it's about. You know, I'm doing it right now. I guess. Yeah. According to you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad this helps, man. Yeah. I think it helps a lot of people. It oh, does. definitely. Like, I mean, people listening. Water. Me. I mean, like every. Like. Yeah, literally. I'm hoping. You know, this is like now. This. So when I release my my single tenfold there, and it's mostly about my dragon, and and there's a way out of it and stuff like, and it's it's sort of an insight to that. Uh, my goal is not to go and get famous or awards or shit like that, man. My my goal now is, can I send a message out? That's it. Make an impact. Make an impact. Anything happens after that is a bonus. Do you know what I mean? Because I thought today it would be a perfect way to send a message through this podcast. You know, Hell yeah. We have. I it think is. we have. Definitely. So, yeah, it's... And going back to like how you said, like, you know, like, what was it for you with this, right? I think once mm-hmm. I... Once... Once... Th- Somebody told me one time that like what I'm doing here changed their life. Wow. Like that. That's impactful, man. Wow. Well, yeah. That's good. That's that'll send goosebumps, man. Yeah. And then and then when there was another one mm. and like another one. Oh, really? Yeah. Like it was just it was more than one, you know? And when 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 somebody like said that, I mean, like that's like how could I not do more? Mm. Right? That's like how could I not? You see what I'm saying about this? God puts people in your lives and puts things for a reason. Hundred percent. Right. I don't know what you believe in. I'm not pushing anything, but I'm saying no. like you're me and you met for a reason. We hundred percent did. Those people that you helped, they were put to listen to this for a reason. Yes. You know? Yes. How, what is the chances that they're going through Spotify or YouTube and they come across your thing? Yeah. Dude, the the whole the whole <clears throat> Thank you for not canceling, by the way. I think for coming here. No, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful now. Yeah. Grateful now. Um, because like, I really, truly believe too. And I, I, I've been saying this a lot lately over the last several weeks or mm-hmm. few months of my life that 
and you said it too multiple times today that like everything happens for a reason people are put in your life for a reason you, yeah you, you meet people for a reason mm -hmm. like there is no coincidence like no. this 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 right now yeah is not a coincidence no like this could be for something else too we don't know but right i'm telling you yeah I've, I've it is no it is we just, we just like don't that. we just don't really know yet no you know it's good it's i believe like, that yeah i really do you know and, and like and the, the other thing about it can be we, you could meet someone a na it could be a negative situation too but it's it's for a future right. reference for okay not to trust this yeah, person don't, don't do that or do business like this or right. do you know that sort of way yeah so you got to watch it's, it's all important yeah it's all important. everything everything yeah. and it's like you know and the way that we connected by the way was mm. um you know our buddy edward crow down in nashville mm -hmm. like that that's how that's how right. you know we you know we discovered each other yeah um just you know when i was down there a few months ago and we just connected on on instagram and you know yeah. like i said like now again, I, I can go do that. I can go down this rabbit hole of, of like, so like everybody. You, know, you meet you meet people for a reason, yeah. Right, like if, dude, if I didn't go to Nashville for that, yeah. you wouldn't be sitting here. No, I wouldn't, because I wouldn't have seen that video. No, that's the truth. You you wouldn't be here. No, that's crazy. Yeah, it's <laughs> wow. dude, it's nuts. I, I I could like I could go on literally for like hours about. Well, this here, shit. let me put it back to this, right? I reached out to an email in. Jesus, I want to say five years ago, I, ne I, I emailed the sea, the sea about Yellow Wolves Creek Water. I says, what are you doing with that? I can promote that in Ireland. I get a phone call. Where are you, buddy? I says, I'm in Boston. Can you make it to North Carolina tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> Drove to North Carolina 12 hours, the meeting with Wolf. Zilla. Now this. Yeah. <laughs> what is the chances of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so that was yeah, well, that was five years ago. Yeah. Right? yeah, five years ago. Okay, and then you know, then fast forward to this podcast didn't even exist then. Yeah. Okay, this podcast did not exist then. It's like I started this show in 2020, <laughs> right? And never in my life did I think that well, this show would have went anywhere, right? Number mm -hmm. one, um, maybe a little bit, you know, but. <clears throat> Um, maybe not as much or, or, or think that it would have had this much of an impact on yeah. my life yeah. or other people's lives. Right. Right. So, yeah. So fast forward to going to Nashville, like That's the crazy. opportunity, like, you know, Zill and I just connected. We, you know, on Instagram, we were connected for a little while and, mm -hmm. he, you know, we barely like, we just, it was kind of like one of those people that you're just, you're following. We don't really know each other, know each right. other. You just kind of like, yeah. oh, I, you know, we just kind of know of, mm -hmm. of who each other are. And, um, and we just started chatting one day and, um, and we started talking, he started just talking about psychedelics, blah, 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 and this yeah. and that. And he's like super passionate about yeah. it. And he's like, and then he's like, and I started talking about photography and mm. then we just started talking about like just stuff like that, just content mm -hmm. online. And, and then, you know, I was just like, oh yeah, like I'm not, you know, I'm talking about pod. He was, I was like, oh yeah, I saw you on a podcast and him talking about the psychedelics on another show. Yeah. And he's like, oh, where'd you see that? I was like, well, I saw, I saw it was on your Instagram. And then he's like looking on his phone. He's like, oh, shit, I forgot that I were connected. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I saw the video. I said, then I went and I, I watched and listened to the episode that you yeah. were on. He's like, oh, yeah, man. I'm like super passionate. About it. I was like, yeah. And then, you know, then he's like, oh, shit. He's like, yeah, and you have a podcast, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, he's like, I'd love to come on and be a guest oh, sometime. And I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, man. Like, he's like, I'll, I'll send you some information about like, you know, you know, some things I do. And of course, I knew who he was. And you know, obviously, I knew yeah. what I do, you know, but, um, but he's like, yeah, he's like, you know, I love to just, you know, talk about some things I'm like really mm. passionate about. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. Like, so we're like, we're on the phone for like a half hour at this point, just down yeah. this like rabbit hole. And I was like, man, listen, I was like, I'll, I'll like, I'd love to, I've always wanted to like take the show on the road, mm. you know? And, mm. uh, and I was like, Hey, listen, like I, you know, I'd love the opportunity if I can, if I can, if I can come down there soon, like I, would you know, maybe, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take the show, bring the show like down there. I was like, it'd be cool. Like I, yeah. I've wanted to do it, you know? Not necessarily Nashville, do it just. And by the way, I I'm not a Nashville person. Like no, I, I've never pr been. prior to. I mean, it's great by yeah. the way. But prior to meeting Zilla and going to Nashville, I never in my life would I would never go to Nashville. I nope. never I never really would. never. Wow. I would I have I have, I, would, I, would, I, would, I had no inclination to ever go to Nashville ever. Wow. I probably you know this is the only reason like something like this yeah is or would have been the only reason that I ever would have went to Nashville right. Um, just I just don't really. You know, it's not a place that no. I'd be like, eh, you know, I want to go there. It interests me. Eh, not, not really. You know right. what I mean? But, um, 
but because of the, the opportunity, I'm oh, like, oh, like I'll, I'll, you know, I'll pretty much go like wherever, right? Yeah. You know, uh, circumstances if yeah. you know, can if, if it can work out. But but he's like, yeah, man, like let me know. He's like, you know, Wolf and I are like, he's like, he was, you know, he was on a, he was like, they were in a, uh, an airport when I was like, I think when I was talking to him, he's like, yeah, we're on tour right now. He's mm. like, but we're we're gonna be um, we're gonna be back in in Nashville. You know, both mm. of you know, both of us, we're gonna be back in Nashville. You know, for like a, a, some time yeah. in between tour stops. And uh, he's like, yeah, if you're around like these dates. And I'm like, yeah, I think so. I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, come down. And I'm like, cool. That's cool. And she's like, yeah. we just we just had like, we just like connected. And it yeah. was just like, that's good. It was crazy. He's man. a super humble, super dope guy. Man. Yeah. yeah. And like, he went so far out of his way to help me. Mm. And a guy like that, like, doesn't need to oh, do yeah. that. No. Like, to for a guy like me. You know what I mean? Well, that's, but yeah, like, you always, yeah. But that, like, that's what's so cool about it. Yeah. You know, it's just, we had that like, as soon as like we connect, as soon as we like we talked, and he like he even thanked me like he's like man he's like I'm glad we finally spoke. Yeah. He was because everything before you and I has just been like some texting here and there. Yeah. And he's like until we spoke, mm. he goes it didn't like we didn't connect until we actually spoke. And then it was like yeah. once we did, it was just like this mesh, man. Yeah, man. You don't know what's going to come out of that. Yeah. I would say that a lot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So anyway, so the rabbit hole, Nashville. That's crazy. Now you're here and wild man it's crazy <laughs> how things future, happen man. no it's it's mad it's just I, I i feel like i felt for a long time anything i touched went to dust man you know and just recently man i feel like anything i go into it's just blowing up man like this time last year i wouldn't have thought that i would be walking through the doors of sirius xm yeah but stand beside steve aoki <laughs> right Going up to on Eminem's radio station, promoting my song, playing my song on air. <laughs> like, yeah, can we talk about that for a second? Because sure. remember, remember going back to you said your mom bought you. Think about that. Did did you ever like take a second to think about this for a second? Your mom, yeah. your mom bought you. It was a cassette, right? It was a cassette, cassette or tip, yeah. Your mom bought you an Eminem cassette mm. when you were when you were a kid, right? And just last week. You know, by the time this episode airs, it's going to be a little delayed. Yeah. But just last week, you were at his radio station, Shade 45, in New York City. On on the radio station. Yeah. Do you know what's crazier than that? <laughs> <laughs> we were all there. The day before I was going on, it was 8 Miles 20th anniversary. That's right. And that movie had a big impact on my life because I remember exactly where I was at watching it. I was on a video. I taped on... TV off someone else's video and I remember like I had all his posters around my room he couldn't get couldn't see a bit of wall it was just all posters and I remember thinking of how shit my life was or like how much drama was going on with my mum and stuff and just like that movie kept me out of there I started writing more you know and then I'm going up there on the on the anniversary it was kind of like wow came a long way <laughs> Yeah, that's wild, man. <laughs> Do you know, I'm a huge Eminem fan myself. Yeah, by the way. man, I just huge. respect his hustle, man. Yeah, I love the fact super, that super people fucking used to hate him, like people were against him, and now you look at him, he's just such a respectful artist. Yeah, like his legendary. I mean, legend, this, like man. legend. Yeah, absolute legend forever. Oh well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, like he's yeah, like he's one of my. I know a lot of people go like, oh, what do you know about hip hop? Then Eminem was your first, but that's not about when you got into hip hop. Like I right, but Eminem was always, always, and always will be with my generation. Being that he was my inspiration from, like some people says you can hear it sometimes off my sound, but and I try not to let that go. But you know, it's it's that's where it started for me. You know, yeah, yeah, like and then. If it wasn't for Eminem, I wouldn't have discovered Yellow Wolf because I was sitting. I remember being in the gym bumping Yellow Wolf and, and trunk music and, and my right. earphones in Ireland. And Yellow like, Wolf fucking, was signed to Sh Shady Records yeah. at one point. I used to. I, I I loved Yellow Wolf before I came to America. I was the only one who did, did like him. I seen him actually at Eminem and Slain Castle. He opened up for Eminem. Oh, nice! And I remember going, "Who's this dude with the cowboy hat?" <laughs> <laughs> Swear yeah. to God, no one. That I knew knew who he, who he was and stuff, and I'm like, "Fuck this kid's like, got this guy's this yeah. guy's dope." And this is on Slain Castle, thousands of people, thirty thousand people in the in the crowd. Wow. Yeah. And then I'm like, dude, this whole thing is like crazy full circle. This happens, you know. This happens like so much on this show. Yeah. Things things like this, stories like this, and like, you know, it's like circumstances and yeah, everything. Like it's it's like I love hearing it. It's that's what I like. I like to be around people like that, man. You know, yeah, where you have this, 
yeah the whole like connection with mental health and music and everything you gotta just that's where you because for a long time i surrounded myself with like anybody who who was was a drunk or addict or yeah you know what i mean yeah now you gotta turn it the opposite way it didn't work that way so try try the other other way way, right flip the coin too risky not to try right right by the way, I'm not saying everybody I hung around with was a, a drunk or an alcoholic. <laughs> sure. yeah. They can drink. I can't. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Mm. So tell me about Tenfold. The song is dope, by the way. Thank you. You listen. <laughs> On repeat, probably about Did that. you really? Thousand. Yeah, man. I, 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 you can ask my wife. I'm, oh, I'm not man. just saying, Thank man. You. I'm telling you. like she's, When you. she listens to this and watches this, she's going to laugh because... That's amazing. Do I had it up on my... I streamed it to my TV, my home. Oh, I yeah. showed her when I, when I asked you to send the, to mm. send the video. I threw that thing up on my TV. I was like, "Hey, I was like, Karen, you gotta, you gotta watch Branko's uh, music video." Oh, nice. I did. I made, so, I made, dude, I made her watch. I put, it, I put it on TV on repeat. The video. Really? I made her watch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's class. Tell her thank you very yeah, much. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That that video was shot by uh, Tanj from Ripe Tangerines and Nick. Um. Thank, uh, thank you guys for that amazing work. They uh, they work for Millie's, and um, they've done uh, who else have they done? Dave East. They do a lot of people. I think they shot Jadakus as well. Um, but yeah, they're, they're they're the magicians behind this. Once he, he showed me a first edit, like sent me over the first edit, I was like, dope. Yeah, <laughs> the one on James. Yeah, keep it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, they were um, amazing. Those guys. I was they um, got me the Porsche as well to drive around. <laughs> Someone's Porsche. Who trusted me with the Porsche? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the whole shooting the video. Then and they got a, they knew what masses I was trying to get across. You know. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's available on Spotify, all the digital platforms, YouTube, yeah. iTunes, the whole works. Yeah, yeah. So so the messaging in in in, in tenfold, like what is what is tenfold? What does that that word mean to you? Well, I mean, if you think about, it, I was in tenfold with my, my lifestyle, you know, drinking, the partying. I was in tenfold. It done nothing for me, you know. I, and I always say like, I'm in it or I'm not. You know what I mean? I'm always in it, hundred degrees. You know, or I'm, in anything I do in life, I'm always fucking, do, 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 you, know, you know what I mean? If it's good or it's bad, I don't do half measures, you know? So, yeah, that's where I was at. And then it's just sort of towards the end, you know, I say, you know, I'm, no, nah, it's not like that. And no, I'm, time to get back to who I was, you know? Yeah. I think that the lyrics in there, mm. right? Yeah. Time to get back Can to who I was. I remember my own lyrics as bad. Yeah. <laughs> It's in there. It's in it there. is, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, told, I told you. I told you before because I, yeah, I, I, asked you, I told you. I said I, I said I'm a big lyrical guy. I, I like. I, I really <clears throat> like. I really like. And I know I said this to you in a message, like before, mm. like you even came here, right? Yeah. That like I really, I really enjoy like actually like reading the lyrics too. Like it's so mm. different. Like I like that. You know, like I, I, I mean, I, I love music. Mm. Like I'm I can just, tell. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you, see, I, I love it when because there's very few people that will give that will message me about. If I release something and they'll say, oh, I love it when you said this. Or, and I love that because then I know that you're genuinely interested in music, first of all. And I love, I could talk to people all day about yeah, it. You know what I mean? You know, like it connects. Like, yeah. Like, like your song, like that song, like your song, Tenfold, like it, mm. it connects with me. Yeah. You know? That's good. Yeah. I love that. It does. Like, I, I, I seriously, man, I really, really, really enjoy the song. Thank you, man. Yeah. That means a lot, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, like, I just, I love, I love, um, just like again, like I'm, I'm like a writer too. Like I like mm. to write, you know. What and, do you write? Uh, well, I'm just like you know, a long time ago, like I, I, I t- dabbled like a little bit in like some stories, poems, like poems, poems, poems as well. Yeah. Like I, I, like, I like rhyming. Like I'm not, I'm never gonna say like I'm, I'm a rapper or a musician because I'm, because I'm Who not. Knows? You know what I mean? I'll what leave, about that? Leave, leave that to you. What is that? The spoken word stuff. Do you ever see that? Yeah, but ne- ne- yes, I have. But mm. I don't, I don't know if that. Not, not that I wouldn't ever yeah. do it, but um, I don't know. Like I, I, I like to, I do like to write. I like yeah. to. You know, um, just put like, you know, just creative, mm. like just experience it mm. and put it down. And, and I, I like the rhyming aspect. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like I just that. this and, and yeah. just putting that together. And even if it's just something short, it doesn't have to be yeah. long. Just, you know, it could be eight lines. Well, I love that. You know, dude, I don't know if you want to ever hear of an Irish poet, Seamus Heaney. Mm. You know, look no, him up. He's very right interesting. He was, um, what is it? I was just what is, what is it? Seamus Heaney, S-E-A-M-U-S. Heaney he actually on his gravestone it says I told you I was sick <laughs> but um 
so I was just, just while I said that, there was a journalist on the phone to me yesterday and mm -hmm. she actually interviewed him at Harvard. But she says he loved rap music and loved the whole hip hop thing and all Like He was very into it, but he's very famous poet from, from Ireland. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I love like, I remember at school, we used to look up poets and stuff and I used to love it. I used to love when the teacher said, okay, we gotta write down a story and you gotta make it like this and you gotta have so many parts. And I used to go, oh yes, here we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I think that was like a, one of the only things like you, I remember you said earlier in the show, like in the beginning, you were good in English class. Mm. And so was I. Yeah. I feel like that's why I connect with you too also because yeah. like, like I just, I, I could, you know, like your talent, like I, um, I, I, I appreciate, mm -hmm. you know, people like you have the talent that you have and like I relate Thank to you. it too because like, Oh know, yeah, like definitely. I said, just because I, I love, the, I love, I like the writing. I love the words. I love the lyrics and the meanings, like yeah. the meaning, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah, when you start to go into the science of it, not like yeah. it's so interesting, you know, like, like when you hear like, I I used to go and read like the sources and stuff and all too, just like go in there, pick a word and go, right, what's this here, do you know? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, even like there's there's different websites online and all. I I would look up and say, if you put this word with that word with that, word, you know. Mm -hmm makes new new words yeah eminem was really good at that mm, yeah that was like one of the things and i remember i don't know what interview it was of his but i remember him he rhymed the word orange, orange yeah with george you know orange. what i'm talking about yeah. <laughs> holy shit yeah i don't even know where i i, I can't even tell it was you. cool the way he broke it down because he basically says you know people like, you say remember, there's like, nothing the, people yeah. say there's nothing rhymes with orange but that word doesn't but if you break it down and i stuck four inch a uh, george put four orange. inch Drawer in your yes. drawers or something like yeah, that. Yeah, whatever it was. Like, yeah. what, would you know where that interview was? Like, what was that? If it's on, I, don't know, I, I can't tell you what it was from, dude. It was old. It was uh, sixty old. seconds. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Yeah, like I don't even know. I think like it's sixty seconds. I don't know why, but I just remembered. Uh, I remembered that because interview. I remember he goes, he's looking through, and he goes, "Oh, I can't show you that. I'll probably use that again." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. Like, it's, it's crazy, but like, but like you know, like Sam, like same thing. Like he's like, he's like a, he's like a genius. Mm, he wordsmith. Like, he's a genius, yeah. man. Like, it's so so it's very intelligent human being. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. for someone like I, like he always said he was in the comic books and all this and like drew and that sort of that creative thing. You can understand because it took him away from him his home life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah, rough rough life. And I feel like when you've nothing, when shit's that bad and shit's just like blurry and you've nothing to look forward to. Then you put you'll put in all your time into this, and that's where your creative, uh, you know, thing will comes out. Yeah, it's like you'll do anything to to get away from that whole shit there, you know. Mm -hmm. So then you're more. I don't know. I think that's how like musicians and artists and like writers are 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 sort of born in from like like from these experiences mm -hmm. that they've had. Like they they can take these experiences like yeah. similar like what you you yeah. had your experiences and you take and you putting it into the music. Yeah, I right? think so. Eminem. Yeah. Has, I think I don't know if every like you know if you can't I suppose everybody's got an experience or two or do you know what I mean yeah if we all had our problems like it's a good job we put them at the table we'll take our own back you know but like it's crazy to think about because I feel like a lot of like some of the greatest mm -hmm. look talent. at Amy Winehouse yeah I always I think she was a fan like fantastic artist mm -hmm. such a shame a waste right but John Lennon fuck. I don't know what his life was. Every time I go to New York, I go there. That's where I fell asleep in Central Park and Strawberry Fields. Mm. Something about that place, man. Draws me to it every time. I love it. Interesting. Yeah. but um, John Lennon fan? Big. Yeah? Why? I, every time I, I don't know. I Just his story. I'd, not so much of him being in the Beatles, but just how he, how he used to conduct himself and, you know, just... Like, not even as much as music, just the guy he is. I don't know. I remember seeing a clip one time. There was some guy walked to his house and was standing there asking him why he said something in a song. Yeah, And he was like, it's just words, man. I just, it's not, I'm not aiming it at you or him or anybody. I'm just making words. I'm an artist. That's what I do. Mm. And then he says, would you like to come in for a cup of tea? And he takes the guy in for a cup of, like, a, some food and all that. Like, it's in this documentary I watched. It's like so humble guy. Like, what's the documentary? If you look in John Lennon fan or something, come up. Um, can't remember what it was. It's a long time ago now. Yeah, I'm sure we could probably could probably Google it and find it out. But it, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go down the road. <laughs> but it's so interesting to me that you're um, like you're 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 a, a John Lennon Beatles fan. Yeah, man. I I look. 
Yeah, there's they're John Allen talks with the stalker. <laughs> it's a he was a Vietnam War vet. Mm-hmm. The guy, so it's on okay. The, yeah, okay. but um, uh, yeah, my like I grew up. My mother was listening to Queen, like uh, um, Johnny Cash, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. I loved all. That's where my country thing comes from. I think like mm. the whole, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Dolly Parton. So, uh, my so my uh, what do you call her? Oh, the, my mind's gone blank. My girl is a Virginia. She brought me to a grave there. My mother used to listen to my mind's gone blank. Who's buried there? There's some country singer. Mm. I went to her grave and put up my mother's uh, photo. There, what Patsy Klein? Okay. So I used to listen. My mother used to listen to Patsy Klein a lot. So then my girl says, "Oh, her grave site's near my house." <laughs> So I went and laid my mother's photo on it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't know. I went down there to do a suicide awareness walk. So it was a very emotional weekend. Mm. Mm. Yeah. How, um, how do you think, uh, like, you know, you know, with your mom, like the rest of your life, like, how is that, how is that, um, help you live out, you know, your goals, your dreams, your passions? Like, well, I, I love this, the, that's what I'm saying. Like I, I want to show not just my mom, but everybody that, that I have, I can do more. I can be more. You know, um, like when my when my mother died, I put in, I made up a, a tape cassette. Um, you know the, that the tape goes in the cover, mm-hmm. and put my photo on it, and I put it in her coffin. To show, and it's a picture of me and dungarees and blonde hair like Eminem, and I put that in her coffin to say, right, I'm gonna get an album out. <laughs> do you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't that, yeah. Things like that. I, I'm very sentimental and things like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shit, there's tons calling me. That's the guy, the Millie's guy, the video. Shit, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. <laughs> pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh man, that would have been a, be a good moment. Be a good moment. Hold on. I right, put him on speaker. Yo, what's up, bro? I'm uh, bro. You're on speaker here. I'm uh, on a podcast right now. So I was told to pick it up. <laughs> Not much. I was just telling this guy about or the single, and um, this is Bill, by the way. What's up, man? Hey, how you doing, man? Good. Welcome, welcome to the welcome to the podcast. Here, you're a, you're a third I'm guest. Down, it's down in Pennsylvania. It's called On the Stacks. So, uh, okay. Well, I'm on the podcast right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's up? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is the guy behind Tenfold. Everybody. So, this is my man Tanj. Yeah, Tanj, he was uh, uh, just just talking about you. Oh, that's what's up. Kind of cra- yeah. kind of crazy. You, you call. How long you guys been talking for? This is almost an hour, I think. <laughs> oh, nice. What's the name of the podcast? On the, on, on the, the stacks. stacks. On the stacks. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. Check yeah, it check out. it out. Then I, do you want me to give you a call after? Yeah, yeah. Give me a call after. All right. Talk to you later, bro. All hey, right. thanks for joining the show. He's a good I was guy. I always tell everybody like you know if somebody if somebody doesn't put their phone on sign or something like somebody calls you got to pick it up. All oh, right, okay, that, that should be a rule. Yeah, you got to put so, that up. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, I'll let. Well, we can talk after because he might be able to get you some guests on. Yeah, him. yeah, that'd be cool. Um, he would come. To, I would say he would. Yeah, look him up too. I will. He's on uh, on Instagram. Yeah. Crazy, crazy how things work out, man. Yeah, man, I'm I'm in a good, I'm in a good space today, you know. Yeah. Um, the music's going well, building good relationships. Beard still looks good. Beard's fresh. Beard is fresh. Yeah. Love it, man. Appreciate you coming in. No, I, I'm really grateful to be here, man. Thank you yeah. for having me on. Honestly, like. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely chop it up again soon. Yeah, man. This you're you're welcome back anytime. Oh, thank you, man. You know, whatever you need, you you have a, a friend and a, and a, a home I'm here, just, man. Thank you, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. So how, how can our listeners connect with you online? Where can they find your music? So you can get me on Instagram. That's where most of my links are. Um, Branko Music, B-R-A-N-K-O Music. And uh, that'll lead you onto my YouTube. And I'm on Spotify, iTunes. Shoot me a DM. Do you want to work? Do you want to do something, features or anything? Let me know. Let's work. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Or again, anybody needs to talk, something going on in your head, I'm, I'm there. Hell yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. This is great. And like I said, you're, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you, man. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing your success. And uh, let's go. It's exciting, man. So yeah. 
keep me keep me in the loop of what's going on and mm-hmm. i know i know we'll i know we'll be in touch and this this isn't uh this is you know there's gonna be more conversations yeah definitely you know, between oh. us man oh yeah definitely 100 so, percent. Yeah. met a friend man absolutely all right awesome. branko on the stacks podcast in the blue door studio thanks for yeah. joining me if you want to see more on the stacks content subscribe to our youtube channel at youtube.com slash on the stacks podcast or search the hashtag on the stacks on instagram facebook and linkedin <laughs>